Hi everyone, this is your chess puzzler. With 18 players taking part in the 2017 Moscow Grand Prix, and with this having kicked off earlier today on 12 May, in nine games there had been only one decisive result, and I will go right into it once this short intro is out of the way. I have added all the participants here, so these are the guys who make up the entire tournament. The game, as you already know from the title, is the one between Nepomniachi and Hui Fan. Though there is some noticeable difference between the ratings of these two players, Nepal met Yifan six times. Surprisingly, Yifan had done very well. She was defeated only once, she won only once, and the remaining games were drawn. No one ever won with the black pieces, and today Hu Yifang ensured this had changed, and with this, she changed history. Nepal with white kicked off with the English, and the game transposed very fast into the Queen's Gambit declined through e6, knight c3, d5, and d4. The game progressed with knight f6, and Yifan went right for the exchange variation of this opening by capturing on d5. After the knight recaptured, we saw the pawn launch at the knight, and here Hu Yifang traded in and shot off with c5, and this game went on through rook b1, bishop e7, and a check on b5. The bishops were exchanged, and now the rook hit on b7. White is a pawn up, but this is not going to last long because after c takes and c takes, the knight blocked the rook in and white needed to be extra careful. Nepomniachi went for queen d2 and though there was no real need to attack the rook just yet, Yifang went for him anyway. Here, bishop f6 would have been fine and should white go for the bishop on e5, queen d5 would have been perfect because the capture of the bishop will drop the rook and black right now is winning. Hu Yifan's move to c8 was rushed but after the exchange sacrifice black was not necessarily much better but nevertheless was better off. Nepal continued with knight f3 a move that was followed by f6 and here white castled. Though white is a rook down he has a good control of the center. Black? Okay, by taking the rook on e7, he lost his castling rights, but this does not matter too much because the rook is still able to join the fun and the king move to f7 looks quite safe. And this is exactly what happened. With king f7, Nepo went for e5, but Yifang stopped any attack white had and closed him off with f5. But Nepal pushed on with g4 and persevered with this attack to open up the file, and though this move in itself was quite risky, his position looked extremely promising. Hui Fan got her rook out to d8, and with queen g5 and king to g8, Nepal was on the attack. He could easily have taken on f5 because the exchange would have led to queen h5 and provided Hu Yifang was able to find queen c6, Nepal's attack is fully neutralized. But let's see how well executed the queen move to h5 was. It certainly allowed rook f8 and with an attack on the rook through bishop a3, Hu Yifang messes up and rather than going for this, g6, she brought out the queen to c6 and was willing to trade in a rook for the dangerous bishop. Nepomniachi had other ideas and chose a completely different approach. Any ideas what he went for in 3, 2, 1, knight g5 going straight for the kill, but this inaccuracy 
cost him the game because he blew his only chance to win it. H6 stopped every single progress White made and even going right after the Queen, Nepal realised his attack had a very limited scope. Yifan's Queen move to d7 was sound and she was holding very well. Nepomniachi finally grabbed the rook on f8 and after the recapture, before he could consider anything else, this knight had to move out of danger first. But this very move dropped a very important central pawn and once this pawn went, we saw g takes and though there was absolutely nothing wrong to recapture with the rook, Hu Yifang captured the e pawn first. With queen g6, the rook attacked the queen and this game was heading towards only one result, leaving no option but to retreat the queen. The rook removed yet another pawn and white was beginning to fall apart. Queen to g3 was a desperate attempt to trade off the queens, but Hu Yifang rejected the offer and went for queen d4. Nepomniachi's rook move to e1 could not have been worse but did seem to have an effect because it forced Hu Yifan to return the rook to f6 to, to protect the pawn. But was there a real need to protect the pawn? And if not, what alternative could there be here? If you try this knight move to c4 rather than protecting the pawn, we'll lead to this variation, but this only works if the rook captures this pawn. Provided you give a check on d1, Forcing now the king to find g2, a follow-up check on d5 will drop the rook on e6 and this would have been game over, simply because white was again too greedy to remove that poison pawn. After rook f6, we saw queen g2, knight d5, king h1, queen d3 and the pressure on white was on. Nepomniachi tried rook g1 going for the unbelievable mate on g7, but Hu Yifang terminated any plans white had through queen f3. No exchange was made here. The rook found b1, allowing the queen to return to f5. Nepomniachi was hopeful and returned his rook to g1, hoping for that golden opportunity on g7, but Hu Yifang responded with rook f7, and the game continued with rook e1, rook f6, rook back to g1, queen f3, rook back to b1, queen h5, rook g1, rook f7, rook back to e1, queen f5, queen g3, rook c7, knight g1, knight f4, rook d1, king h7, queen f3, Rook c2, a3, e5, rook back to e1, queen g6, h3, and Hui Fan missed a great, great opportunity. Can you see this in 3, 2, 1, rook c3? Because should the queen capture the rook, we have a nice mate through queen g2. But rather than this beautiful move, Hu Yifang went for knight d3, pushing the rook back to f1. With rook c3 and queen g4, the queens came off, and with the removal of yet another pawn on a3, Nepomniachi's resignation was imminent. Knight f3 led to rook a4, g5, h5, king g2, rook g4 check, King h2, a5, rook a1, a4, rook a2, and now the very strong e4, pushing the knight out to d4. Taking the pawn on f2 would have been the icing on the cake, because should the rook recapture, we would have seen e3, rook e2, and the knight drops, and so does the game. Having missed this simple combination, Hu Yifang arrested the pawn, and with the rook capturing the a-pawn, black took on f2, and the material imbalance between the two sides was just too much for Nepomniachi. With rook a7, knight g4 check, king h3, and rook e5, 
the knight attacked the rook, but with rook d5, Nepo had enough and resigned to a far superior player on the day. And with this being the only win of the day, Hu Yifang finds herself leading the guys and the tournament so far. And on this very note, many thanks for taking part and many, many thanks for watching.